I could just put this all on you. Is the fire worse or better looking in Wonder Woman? You be the judge. Pretty bad, though. Trying to find a decent horror movie on Netflix isn't so much like finding a needle in a haystack, but more like that one trap from Saw 2. So today I'm gonna to talk about some of the worst horror movies on Netflix. When you're doing your daily scrolling, these are the ones to avoid. And boy is the first one I'm gonna talk about a doozy. Number one is The Bye Bye Man. Yes, that's the title they went with. I'll tell you, do you know The Bye Bye Man? The Bye Bye Man? The Bye Bye Man. This is easily the worst movie on the list today. The viewing experience is akin to watching trash burn. Sure, it smells and there are better ways to use your time, but you can't help but watch. Bye Bye Man gets literally everything wrong. Acting? The main cast offers smirks and the wide-eyed gerbil look and not much else. He gets in your head and, and he makes you do horrible things. Writing. Right off the bat, the script commits the mortal sin of having characters explain who they are and their relationships like they're in a fucking ad. Tier one. Hey, he made me look smart and I made him look ugly. But after the crash, he took care of me. Talk shit about my boys, folks. You're done. <sighs> no one talks like this. Well, house off campus with John Henry and a live-in girlfriend. The horror? Every cliche is here. Seances, finding some relic of a person in the third act to explain the lore. Ooh, I hope you like lame jump scares. The movie tries so hard to make its main tagline, don't say it, don't think it, creepy and iconic. By the third act, it's practically a punchline. Don't say it, don't think it. Don't say it, don't think it! Don't say it, don't think it! Don't say it! This isn't a movie as much as an unplanned autopsy. A sublime example of how every facet of filmmaking can go wrong. This is perfect. Oh, easy. You alright? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I'll say this. Um, that moment had more chemistry than Ginny and Harry Potter ever did, so... Points. Next is, there's someone inside your house. <sighs> I mean, where do I even start with this overrated, dumb movie? Well, we'll start with the obvious. The acting is embarrassing. No one is selling the jokes they're telling, and when it comes to displaying fear or rage, the majority of the cast lands somewhere between Sharknado and a Sharknado ripoff. I want money because, like, I need Venmo you right now. Like, we don't want to know. Like, hey, hey, look, man, we were. <laughs> We were all wasted. The Venmo line almost seemed like a joke. If that was comedy, that was just as misplaced as in the movie Us. I do find it a little absurd how they depict high school in this movie. The jocks are all energy drink swilling idiots who can't act, and the gay characters are sassy quip dispensers who can't act. And the divides between different groups isn't completely unrealistic in a high school, but the way it's depicted is straight out of a John Hughes movie. Pleasure to meet y'all, I guess. Officially. Caleb. It's not a country club, Caleb. Bitch. At least the lead actress is decent, but everyone else made me roll my eyes faster than that doll from Squid Game. In many ways, this movie is the epitome of bad, modern, teen horror movies. Not to say this genre can't be done well, but all the bad tropes are here. The poor acting, the stilted banter, the shitty special effects, the overdone music. It's douche-chill the film. You're in my house, so I can legally kill you, <laughs> you fuck! If you're looking for a solid creature feature with suspense and good death scenes, you should ignore this faster than the DM from a Bitcoin bro. But if you want an unintentionally hilarious romp in the jungle, then you cannot get much wilder than Anaconda. Here's the main reason why the movie doesn't work for what it's trying to do, and why it works almost too well as a comedy. Anaconda boasts one of, if not the most bizarre casts ever put to screen. It's a monster movie, starring Jennifer Lopez, Eric Stoltz, John Voight as a South American, Owen Wilson, and Ice Cube? <laughs> I, I don't even, like, what? <laughs> 
And it's not like they're terrible per se. Well, okay, Voight is atrocious, but it's more that they don't congeal. It feels like a prank. Might as well talk about John Voight, who is apparently doing an accent from Paraguay, but he sounds more like Tommy Wiseau doing Scarface. Saron, Paul Saron. Where are you from, Mr. Saron? Paraguay. Really? I needed to see the real world. So, no, Anaconda is not good. The snake looks absurd, the way the plot develops is insanity, it's never scary, it's never particularly tense. Every character feels like they're from a different movie, and both the CGI and practical effects were not ready. But of all the movies I'm going to talk about today, this one is easily the most fun. And its earnestness is what makes it both very entertaining and kind of adorable. You know, looking at my analytics, I think my videos tend to do better with men. So, you know what? This moment, this one's for the ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. How can you resist? Next is The Silence. Oh, man. This movie is like a cheap copy of Bird Box, which itself was a boring, overrated, and uncreative mix of A Quiet Place and The Happening. So, watching The Silence is like drinking the backwash of beer brewed with backwash, also known as Keystone Light. Oh, whatever. The cliches are rampant. The creatures don't offer a flitter of scares. Stanley Tucci seems confused as why he's even in this. I would say he was phoning it in, but this is more like a fax. Watching this, you can't help but be reminded of other films. It's like they plucked specific scenes and tropes from different movies and just splayed them into a timeline. What the hell does that mean, don't make noise? <laughs> what do you think, asshole? And it's not just in the writing, but even the look of the movie, the CGI, the color grading, the camera movements. It's not only derivative, but it reeks of low effort. If I can coin a phrase, this is a 3 p.m. on a Friday movie. It doesn't give a shit, and it's waiting for the end. And then it just ends? Legitimately, it feels like they ran out of time. Maybe Craft Services was late, and they didn't want to film on empty tummies. Or maybe their budget ran out. He leadeth me beside the still water. The film doesn't even get the creatures right. There's nothing inventive about their design or their sound. It's like they grabbed a Pokemon and added some random squealy noises and... Okay, we're good. Who's that Pokemon? Don't waste your time with this. You've seen this movie before and done way better. And lastly, The Open House. This is not so much a review of The Open House, but a PSA, a piece of shit avoidance. This is 90 minutes you will not get back. 90 minutes so dull that you want them to use more hard tropes and dirty tricks and cliches, because then at least something would happen. 90 minutes of nothing until there is something and the something is barely anything. Saying that, you're probably not going to give this 90 minutes even if you press play. You're probably going to get bored and skip through and give it like 30 minutes. And even that is giving too much. I have not watched 13 Reasons Why, and so I hope slash assume the lead actor does a decent enough job on that show. But here, while he can handle throwaway lines, the heavy emotional beats are out of his grasp. It it's like quicksand. The more he flails and overacts, the worse it gets. Does the actor think that opening your mouth as wide as possible always hits the right mark? Because honestly, he just looks like Pac-Man. Story-wise, the movie can be compared to a haunted house slash home invasion movie, but the majority of the runtime is people running errands and getting into slight disagreements with each other. That's about it. It's not, um, not particularly dramatic. <laughs> You know, if you're gonna have characters wander around rooms and have slow conversations for 80% of the runtime, could you maybe shoot it better? Think about how unnerving and ominous The Shining is when little is actually happening. Oh man, like, 
I don't even know what else I can say. There is just so little to analyze. This is so uneventful. You could splice in some accordions and cigarettes and convince people this is a bad French drama. Except those move faster. Skip this one. But are there horror movies on Netflix that are even worse? I would love to know in the comments, and I plan to do a video about some of the best ones on Netflix that maybe you haven't heard of. Please comment below, I love all the feedback, and I'll see you guys next time. Mabel's being too harsh on her accent. Let's let's really hear this this American accent. I don't remember doing any of that. Oh, chip chip cheerio.